Welcome to the MySO STEM session for September. We are so glad you're here tuning in to learn more about this very timely topic, epidemiology. Since the start of the global pandemic in 2020, we've all become a lot more familiar with public health. Epidemiology is everywhere, even at the Olympics. If you watch the track and field events in Tokyo this summer, you will have seen medalist Gabby Thomas, who has been dubbed the fastest epidemiologist in the world. Gabby studied epidemiology at Harvard and is now pursuing a master's degree in public health, hoping to eliminate racial disparities in our healthcare system. Another scientist in the news is Dr. Lindsay Marr, a Virginia Tech professor and Science Olympiad alum. After getting an engineering degree from Harvard and a doctorate in civil and environmental engineering from UC Berkeley, she completed her postdoc work at MIT. Her multidisciplinary background has made her one of the leading scientists on airborne viruses. And she recently told us that Science Olympiad helped to cultivate her love of science and she loved investigating topics outside of the classroom, outside of textbooks and lectures and homework and exams. We get it. She also appreciated engaging with other students who, like her, loved science and loved intellectual pursuits. Our speaker for this month is another outstanding epidemiologist, Kelly Cordiera of the CDC. She's a Science Olympiad National Event Supervisor for Disease Detectives and works hard to improve student programs and partnerships at the CDC. Let's hear from Kelly about her career path to public health. What do you do and what does that mean? Hi, my name is Kelly Cordera and I'm an epidemiologist at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. In my role as an epidemiologist, I lead student programs and partnerships. Most of my work focuses on educating youth and keeping your communities, like your school, healthy. One way we do this is by working with your amazing teachers and coaches from across the country to create fun activities for you to do in the classroom or during after school programs like Science Olympiad. These activities are meant to teach students like you how to do science like disease detectives and to help address public health problems like obesity, opioid misuse, bullying, racism, outbreaks, and even pandemics. Our goal is to help you participate in conversations about public health at your home and at your school and to help address real world public health issues in your communities. We also want to open your eyes to the possibility of a career in public health in the future. Where did you go to college or graduate school and what did you study? For college, I went to the College of Holy Cross in Worcester, Massachusetts. I studied biology and con with concentrations in pre-medical studies and women and gender studies. Because Holy Cross is a liberal arts college, I also had the opportunity to take a wide variety of classes in sociology, philosophy, a language, and the performing arts. For graduate school, I went to the University of Texas School of Public Health in Austin. I completed my master's degree in public health with a focus on adolescent health, primarily with research interests in nutrition, physical activity, and obesity prevention. After earning my MPH, I traveled to Brazil to work with the Federal University of Pelotas on physical activity research. As a scientist, what does a typical day look like for you? As a scientist, a typical day can look like a lot of different things. It just depends on the day. Some days, I admit, I spend most of my time at my computer, responding to emails, writing reports, and in meetings. It's not always glamorous. Real disease detectives and other public health professionals are not always solving outbreaks in the field. But through gathering data and information, using science to make decisions about how to solve public health problems, and meeting with other CDC STEM professionals, as well as other public health organizations, to discuss things like how can we best communicate this information or how does this fit into policy? We ensure that our work is timely, relevant, realistic, and based on science and data. What excites you about your work? In my work, it's exciting to see students like yourselves become interested in becoming disease detectives and other public health professionals. Much of my work focuses on providing real world training opportunities and experiences for teachers to help students find their pathway into a public health career. So it is really rewarding to hear from your teachers that we've worked with, that those students are taking action in their local communities to support public health efforts. I'm also really excited about a new project we plan to release this fall and hope that you will be too. It's a series of really cool animated videos and activities that your teachers can do with you in the classroom or your coaches can do to prepare you for the Science Olympiad Disease Detectives event. 
The videos and lessons focus on answering some key questions you may have had throughout the pandemic. Like how does disease spread? Who is at risk? And how does laboratory testing work? And more. It also spotlights a few different types of public health careers, so you can learn about what a variety of public health professionals do. We can't wait to share this project with you. Coming soon this fall. Do you collaborate with other STEM professionals? How and who? I collaborate with a lot of other STEM professionals every day. This is actually one of my favorite parts of the job. There are so many rewarding public health careers, from scientists, to statisticians, and other people who work with data, to writers and journalists, teachers and researchers, engineers and technicians, to nurses and doctors, to policymakers, and people who do international relations. In any given week, I collaborate with such a wide variety of experts on projects. By sharing our expertise with each other, we have better ideas and ultimately better results. It also keeps it from ever getting boring. Someone teaches me something new almost every day. When you started working as a scientist, what surprised you about your work? When I started working as a scientist, two things really surprised me. First, how much group work there is. Everyone brings different expertise to the table and collaboration is so important. The second is how dynamic and iterative public health is. There's always new data being collected through surveillance and research, which informs our science and helps us evolve our understanding of what is happening. I remember learning the scientific method in school and thinking that there's no way that scientists really went through this process every single time they had a question about something or were trying to solve a problem. But it's true, we use it all the time. We also use math, and I can't tell you how many times I've had to edit a research paper for grammar and sentence structure. I guess this shouldn't have surprised me though. These are the things that we learn in school. I was just so surprised at how well it translated into being a scientist. What's the most exciting thing you've learned in the last year? Well, the last year has been particularly eventful when it comes to public health. The term most often used has been unprecedented, and I very much agree with that. Since the start of the pandemic, one of the most important things I've been reminded of is that public health is really the science of helping people. It is certainly has not been an easy year, but there has also been a great coming together of people from all different backgrounds to practice science and help people across social status, religion, race, ethnicity, gender, age, politics, and jobs. There are always people and organizations willing to put their differences aside and be eager to lend their time and expertise to help people. To me, it's exciting and encouraging to think about what the coming together of people can continue to accomplish to keep America healthy. Who introduced you to Science Olympiad? Dr. Ralph Cordell introduced me to Science Olympiad. Dr. Cordell is also an epidemiologist at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. He was and still is one of my mentors and over the last eight years has become a great friend. You may all know him as the national event director for the Science Olympiad Disease Detectives event. Any funny or interesting memories from your time with Science Olympiad? Well, my best work stories often include Dr. Cordell. My favorite memory from my time in Science Olympiad is when Dr. Cordell and I were invited to attend an event at the Field Museum in Chicago with the Science Olympiad team. There was a wind machine that of course Dr. Cordell had to just get in. He was spinning around, swinging his arms and shouting wah ha ha just to hear how the wind would change his voice, just like a kid. After, he was going on and on about the physics of it all. And it occurred to me that we're all just kids at heart. And that even after a lifetime of being a scientist, experiencing, learning, and sharing new knowledge can be really exciting. It was inspiring and also really, really funny to watch. What did you learn in your work with Science Olympiad that helps you today? In writing some of the National Disease Detective events, mostly for middle school, I learned that most of you already have a great foundation of knowledge and skills to become tomorrow's disease detectives. You are also really great problem solvers and critical thinkers. When it comes to solving public health problems, there is often more than one way to approach it. Over the years, I've seen you all come up with some innovative solutions in not just the disease detective event, but in a wide range of Science Olympiad events. And it makes me truly believe that as future scientists and other professionals, you will be able to pivot and change your thinking as knowledge and technology continue to evolve. Through Science Olympiad, I learned that you all are going to change our future for the better. What advice do you have for students interested in science? My advice for anyone, even if you're not interested in science, is to follow a path that makes you happy. 
In life, you will go through different seasons and you will find yourself passionate about different things. Just like science, we as people evolve and so does our path in life. Believe it or not, many of my friends and colleagues at CDC did not start out their career pathways knowing that they wanted to do public health. Some started as photographers or members of the military, librarians, teachers, nurses, and so much more. For me, I didn't even know about public health until after college. I was a teacher and then a wedding planner, among a spattering of other things, before I found public health. Being those things at different points in my life makes me a better scientist today. It's okay to not know what you want to be when you grow up. It all eventually comes around. What do you like to do in your free time? I love to garden and play fetch with my golden retriever named Pearl. Or you can find me playing tennis or visiting my friends and family. I also love to travel. Thank you so much for listening this month, and we hope that you'll visit the Science Olympiad website for resources and educational materials to support your career path of choice.